Hey guys, welcome to my second podcast installment. I still don't know what I'm doing, but it's still really fun. Um, I get these emails telling me, oh, you have so many downloads, like, you know, you get, you know, your first hundred or 200 or whatever. It lets you know these milestones. That's great and all. That's good. Um, but I have no idea what that means. (laughs) I got an email from, uh, the little, the podcast website that I go through. And it said that I had uh, 2000 downloads so far. And I, again, I have no idea what that means, but thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I actually had to Google this and I asked a few friends and I still don't understand completely what downloads are, (laughs) but I promise I know things like I listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, but honestly, I listen to them through the app that's available for that podcast. Um, sometimes I'll go through the website too, but, um, uh, it's not something that you think about a lot. You just sit down, do your dishes, drive in your car and you just press play. Um, and don't ask very many questions about how you're getting that podcast. Now that I'm on the other end, um, it's fun for the most part, but I, I, I am rather ignorant to how this all works. So I just want to say thank you to you guys. I appreciate the support. Um, with this podcast. And um, I'm hoping to upload more of my older videos through podcast form. So uh, hopefully that'll bless you guys and edify you. And uh, thank you to all of you who kept asking me to do this. (laughs) So um, props to you. So um, this is one of the fun things about doing a podcast is that it's, it's, in my opinion, a little bit more laid back than making a video. And there are some topics that I kind of wanted to, to talk about in today's podcast. First, I kind of want to start with something that's rather politically incorrect in our today's, um, in today's society. And I'd like to say something politically incorrect, if I may. I love men. Yes, you heard that right. I, a female, love men. I think that men are awesome. Now, I'm sure that at my uttering such a statement, I'm going to take a guess that somewhere out there, there's now a raging feminist who has a twitch in their eye and they don't know why. And I have to tell you guys a little disclosure here, a little full disclosure here. Um, I grew up with a very feminist type um, family and it's not, (laughs) then let me be clear, it is not the type of feminism that we see today. Um, It's a little, um, I think the polite way to put it is uh, it's been overcorrected. We've gone off the cliff. We have fallen down the cliff and we are now burning to ash in the valley below. We have overcorrected with so many things in our country right now. But yeah, I grew up with this this outlook um, of, of men that wasn't unhealthy, but some of it wasn't very healthy at the same time. And I, I, you know, now that I'm an adult and I have uh, two little girls, I'm married to my husband and seeing everything that's going on in our country. And uh, I see this, this animosity towards men, you know, sometimes. And I've kind of taken pause the last, I don't know, five years, kind of stepped back. And I've looked at my individual experiences as a woman. And I think, yes, there's things we need to talk about, especially in the church. And you all have heard me talk about this in previous videos, how, um, especially as a woman who wants to study theology and apologetics and wants to dig deeper, um, I haven't really shied away from how uh, unpopular that can be in some churches where the men just don't take you seriously. And that is not to say that that's at all churches. This is, uh, I think, a a problem overall. And, you know, we've talked about these things. We've brought them to the table. They're being addressed. And I have to say, um, especially in the ministry that I'm in, the men are amazing. They are absolutely, they come alongside you, treat you like a sister, like a legit sister in Christ, not some pariah. No, no, no. I, I have not witnessed that at all. And I am very happy to say that, but I'm, I'm going to say this again, and I'm going to explain why I love men. Okay. I am married to 
a lusciously six foot one over 200 pound man. Okay. Let me tell you something. There is a difference between men and women and we should celebrate that. Okay. There are some things that I think on both sides, males and females, man, we, we need to have cars on the table talks and discussions and face some, some difficult things that we both struggle with. All right. From, from both sides of the fence here, but I'm celebrating the fact that when I need a couch moved, I know that my husband is going to move that like the bear of a man that he is. I, people think I'm taller than I am. I am not. <laughs> I'm like maybe a, I don't know, I'm a tall 5'2", maybe, maybe a very short 5'3". And so if I need something done, okay, now, it, it's going to be difficult. Now that now that's just his size, right? Let me Let me tell you a little story just to kind of navigate my point here. This happens all the time in my house, almost daily, if you will. I'm working on a shelf, okay? I'm putting a shelf up in my daughter's room. And I want to be clear and say that, yes, women are perfectly capable of doing certain things that men can do, like building things, construction. My mom was a single mom with three kids and she is tough as nails. She'd get underneath the sink and she would fix that garbage disposal. You know what the air conditioner needed to be turned on? She'd get up on the roof and she'd turn it on. But with as much of a feminist as she was, she knew <laughs> when she needed a man. And it was when she just exhausted all her options. She she knew that there was a point where her capabilities had to stop and the natural capabilities of a man came into play and vice versa, okay? I'm building this shelf. I'm trying to build this shelf. And I, I, I'm I proud of myself, all right? I, I get the uh the line drawn you know because you have to you have to draw it straight on the on the uh, wall before you put it up there and I draw the line I'm trying to measure it and my husband who hasn't been a part of this process walks by and he's like that line is not straight and I'm like excuse me yeah that line is perfectly straight (laughs) uh sir um move along I am woman, hear me roar, keep walking. It was fun banter, but I I had to think to myself, first, he is way smarter than me when it comes to certain things like this. Okay, so that was tinging in the back of my head, like, okay, um, he wouldn't have said something if he didn't have to, because that's just how he is. Number two, what if he was right? Number three, how could he have possibly known that that line wasn't straight. Okay, so it it just got me thinking because it's a pain in the neck. If you do not have your screws in on either side of where that shelf is, if you put the shelf on and it's not straight, you have to start all over. You have to take the screws out and you got to, you know, you know, you got to correct it. All right, and I just didn't want to do that. So I decide to measure the line to make sure it's straight. I get out the ruler, and sure enough, I was off by like an inch, you guys. It, it, how could I have possibly had been off that much? I fix it, I correct it, and ta-da, I put up the shelf, okay? Here's the thing. How did he know that the line wasn't straight? How could he have possibly, how did his brain just look at that and think, yeah, that's not quite right. And this is the epitome of what I love about men. I love the fact that when something needs to get done, there's an analytical, logistical way to get that done and it gets done well. You know what? You can probably think a man for most of the buildings that we have. You know what I mean? Like, the contribution that they make to society is important. And that is so politically incorrect now, especially in the family and the home. I cannot tell you how many times I've been grateful 
to, to have a man in the home, not just because I feel protected, I feel secure, but I know that if my sink gets a leaky, my hero of a husband doesn't even have to go on YouTube to figure it out. He just knows. I find that fascinating. And again, I'm going to put a disclaimer, a caveat with this. I know that there's perfectly capable women out there that can do all these things as well. I understand that. I can learn how to do so many things on a car. For example, my dad was a major car guy. He still is. He could probably rebuild an engine. I'm just saying that that probably comes a lot more natural for him, like 98% of men, than it would for a woman because our interests are different and we should celebrate those things. I celebrate the fact that I love being in my kitchen cooking, taking care of my family. Um, I don't talk about my ethnicity a lot, but I am a huge chunk of me is Greek and we love food. I love food. Give me, give me something to bake in there and I'm happy. Let me feed my family. Let me take care of my children. Like my drive is different. It's politically incorrect, but I'm celebrating the fact that men are pretty awesome. Now, with that being said, I'm in this thought process, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm building things and I'm, I've been thinking about this stuff for a while about how grateful I am for, for, for men in general. Um, I'm grateful for their contributions to society, to the church, to all, call, all kinds of things. Um, I'm, I'm of course not saying that they're perfect and I could probably very easily have a rap sheet of things that, um, we could sit here and rant and, and complain about, but I mean, I don't think it's necessary. I think I'm pretty covered. Lots of other women do this for a living nowadays, apparently. The, the, the atmosphere of our culture has basically done the opposite for me. I, I now am grateful for the men that fight for us. I'm grateful for the, for the men who provide for their families that take a, a leadership role. I'm seeing so much how so important that is so i just want to say thank you to you to you men so like this weird you know man hating club that our culture has been perpetuating the last few years has just done the opposite for me okay so i'm pondering these things and these thoughts are in my head i have the headspace that men aren't horrible human beings and that they make good contributions to society. And this article pops up. <laughs> Quite a few, actually. I, I, I check, uh, there's a Google News Feed that I have, and just random things come up. And I, I look into many different articles, okay, that of, of many different perspectives that's going on. So I never know what I'm going to get, because the algorithm kind of puts in my face things that they think I might like jokes on them because <laughs> they really don't know what I like. I think I've confused the algorithm. But this this one article caught my eye. And it was actually uh, not just one article, this article interview rather has come up um, on many different platforms. And what it is, it's an interview that Demi Lovato did. She, I think it was an interview or something. Uh, it was at the 19th Represents Summit whatever that is. And, and lots of outlets have covered this interview. This is just one of them, one of the articles that came up with this interview. Now what I'm going to do, I want to read this to you. Because there's a saying out there, you know, it says, if you give them enough rope, they hang themselves. And this is kind of a, a, a big example of what's happening to truth in our culture right now. And I think it's very telling. Now, before I read this, I kind of want to put a little disclaimer out there. Anytime that anybody in ministry or on YouTube or anywhere, whenever you have a platform, it's almost like we're expected to bash people. And sometimes that's just not fair. Um, because if you're talking about a controversial subject and you're disagreeing with it, that does not equate bashing. Disagreement does not equate equal hate. And I think that's odd, especially when I when I first started out in ministry, it was just I loved how people would have debates. Like 
intelligent debate. And there, there was, um, you know, of course there was emotion there, but nothing like how it is today. So I actually care about Demi Lovato as a human being. I pray for her. I worry about her. I, I think how, how, how much she has to deal with in her head to get to a point where this is now how she sees herself. So I'm just going to say, like, please don't make fun of her. Like, be, be Christ-like, you know, in your disagreement. Um, I think that it's, it's odd to me how we have people who are uh, very outspoken in their Christianity, but they're almost hateful in their rhetoric. Um, they, they, they don't have this truth and love thing down. And they make fun of people. They um, don't seem very intelligent in their arguments. And, you know, this is the stuff that people associate with Christianity. I don't want any part of that. I don't think that Jesus meant for any of us to be bullies. Okay. So I'm going to read this and I'm going to disagree. But I want to say before I read it that I'm reading this as somebody who very much disagrees. But my heart in this is not to hate on or or bring any sort of animosity towards Demi Lovato as a person. I want to take this logic and pick it apart because somebody needs to do it. So, okay, um, I'm not going to read the whole article. This is just part of it. And by the way, again, this is at many news outlets, um, articles. Every, a lot of people have written on this. You can pretty much find this anywhere. Okay, the article starts off. Demi Lovato has opened up on how fluid their gendered journey has been so far and predicted what could happen in the future. The singer announced back in May they identified as non-binary, which means they don't subscribe to the traditional male or female gender constructs. People who are non-binary will typically express themselves in ways that cater exclusively to them. Whether that expression is illustrated in the form of fashion, lifestyle choices, haircuts, or behavior is up to the individual. Identifying as non-binary helps many people free themselves from the confines of the male-female construct, which is exactly what Demi has experienced in the months after coming out. Now, uh, end quote. Now, I'm going to go on to read things that Demi has said in this interview. And, uh, okay, so this is Demi speaking, quote, Being non-binary, what that means is that I'm so much more than the binary of man and woman, and that we are all so much more if we allow ourselves the ability to look within ourselves and challenge that binary that we've grown up living in. I was very nervous in the beginning to come out as non-binary because I didn't want people to think it was inauthentic. End quote. Keep this in mind, this part that she just said right now. Quote, I was very nervous in the beginning to come out as non-binary because I didn't want people to think it was inauthentic. I'm going to keep reading here. I just wanted people to see that coming out as non-binary meant what it meant to my healing process. Now they stopped quoting her here and the article goes on. Just because one might identify one way doesn't mean they can't change their minds depending on what feels right for them. Here's Demi again, quote, there might be a time where I identify as trans. There might be a time where I identify as non-binary and gender conforming my entire life. Or maybe there's a period of time when I get older that I identify as a woman, Demi said. The confident singer added that whatever happens in the future, they are enjoying the freedom that non-binary offers them right now. The 29-year-old even admitted they misgender themselves sometimes and said it's a huge transition to change your pronouns. She said, quote, it's difficult to remember sometimes. As long as you keep trying to respect my truth, and as long as I remember my truth, the shift will come naturally. End quote. There's so much to say here, guys. I, to, to see... This is strange to me because the irony in, in her statements epitomize the mind frame of our culture right now. She can't remember her truth. She can't remember her truth. And I think that this is so interesting is that it's what I've been saying for so long. People 
will jump from one thing to the next, and it's a temporary happiness. It's a happiness quest, not a truth quest. People don't want truth. They're redefining truth. But if you're actually wanting to live by truth, but you don't like that truth, then just change it. The fact that she can change her identity, and that's acceptable, is strange to me. You can change your mind depending on what feels right for you. Now, somebody might be listening to this and they're wondering, well, what's the harm? She's not hurting anybody. Here's the problem. When you have a platform, okay, not even a platform, let's just say that you have an influence, okay, there's a responsibility that goes along with that. I do not think that it is okay to perpetuate lies for the comfort of what is acceptable to society. That is not good. And it is harmful to people. That's the problem. It is harmful ideology. And anybody that lifts this up as the higher moral standard that we need to live by, they're in essence saying, we accept and are going to live by lies. That's not good. And it's not just her. These are things that are being accepted everywhere. It's a trend. I'm convinced that this is a trend. You have people that are changing their genders. They don't even know what that means, but they're trying to find community. They're trying to fit in. This is nothing new. Think back, however old you are. Think back to when you were in high school. Think back to whenever you were in your early 20s. Think to the groups that you were in and the really dumb things you did to fit in. See, when I was in high school, I remember people talking about how they don't fit in. Okay, nobody understands them. And there's nobody like them. And they're very lonely. Yet there's people singing songs exactly explaining how they feel, what they are. And there's millions of other people that are saying the same thing. And they're all the same. It's a trend. It was a trend. Okay, so that's just one aspect of this. Okay, because there's people out there that actually struggle with this, that really, truly struggle with this. And I wonder if this wasn't a thing, would Demi Lovato and thousands of other kids out there say, oh, I'm struggling with my gender. That must be what's wrong with me. When that was incredibly rare many years ago. Like if that were never put on the table for anybody to say, hey, maybe you're having issues with your gender. You know, like if that wasn't even an option for somebody to be like, hey, you can choose your gender. And and this sh- social construct that we have is damaging. If that were never put on the table, would people actually think that that was an issue, particularly the younger people? I remember in like middle school, high school, these the weird things that we would do. I mean, just off the top of my head, I'm trying to think of, you know, when I was in middle school or high school and we had something called uh, either you were a rocker, a rapper, or a floater. And if you were a rocker, you had to dress a certain way and be a certain way. And it meant that you liked rock music. But if you were a rapper, you dressed a certain way, you looked a little a different way, a certain way. But if you were a floater, you were in between. You just you liked both rock and rap. Can't you have both worlds? And if you liked country, you were just in a different world. Now that was out here where I live in New Mexico. I don't know how it was everywhere else, but that's kind of my point. We didn't have social media back then. There were trends that went on though, all around the world. I remember when witchcraft was a huge thing in in middle school. It was a trend. You, we watched things like the craft. Remember all this stuff that came out in the 90s about you know witchcraft and all that kind of uh, spirituality, occult stuff? This, in a way, fits a social construct. You're trying to break those barriers, saying everybody thought that this was bad, but we're going to say it's good. It's that same pattern. 
I have to say that I think that this is probably more than I've ever seen it in my entire life, though. And I think a lot of it has to do with technology, where we're at with social media and such. So I want to be really careful in how I define my terms when I say trend, um, because that's really what I mean. I mean something that people find a communal interest in, but they don't actually fit the bill. It becomes something that, oh, well, my friend says she's bi, and all my other friends say that they're bi. You know what? I think I might be bi, even though you're really not. (laughs) It's something that is an anomaly um, because we want to become who we hang out with because if we don't become that thing, we run the risk of being unaccepted. It's a weird cycle and kind of an odd paradox that we find ourselves in. It's like we want to be different and be outside the mold, yet as kids, as as teenagers, as young people, we end up doing that anyway. It's rather odd. So it's almost like people are looking for something to fill them up. This is just the newest thing that's being in our society right now saying, oh, no, this must be what's wrong with you. you. You you need to to embrace this as your truth, you know? And here, you know what? Here, hold on. I have more examples of this. You know, I come across these people that are, are incredibly unique in the sense of where they find their identity. This is important because, again, I'm going back to the, well, what's the harm? Well, okay, I would probably wonder about people living out their truth that they believe that they're a hobbit. There is a man, I forget where, somewhere in the world, somewhere I believe he's in Europe, who has built an entire shire and he lives as a hobbit. And there are other people that live with him on in this community. He really believes he's a hobbit. He believes that this is his truth. He believes that he's going to be happier to live like this. He even says, quote, I choose not to believe that this is a fantasy, for this is my reality. Unquote. He's saying this is my truth. Okay. And then you have people, and this is everywhere. Oh my. Uh, on YouTube, there's a series, I forget what this is, uh, what the name of it is, but there are people that they're changing their identities to become what they believe to be who they truly are. Okay, so you have people, for example, you were just talking about hobbits, there's a man who wants to live like an alien. He wants to become genderless. He wants to remove his genitals. Because that's his truth. This is truly who he is. And the world needs to accept this. They choose the fantasy over the reality. They say this in almost every single one of these instances that I look into. This is now being celebrated. People have plastic surgery, spends, oh man, the amount of money they spend to change their outside appearance, to fit who they truly believe to be in their head, in their minds. You know, and it's not just this guy wanting to be an alien. You have people that are getting cosmetic surgeries to look like and become Kim Kardashian, you know, Britney Spears. Uh, Ollie London has been a name that's been coming up lately because he now identifies as Asian. There's people that identify as as fairies. Like there's, there's people that actually think that they are mythical fairies, mermaids. And, and millions of people watch these videos. I mean, you have to understand that when I say it's a trend, this is kind of what I mean, where we have now embraced this postmodernism, relativism, where we can, in essence, say, this is my truth, even if it's a lie. <laughs> and people accept this. Maybe I can live my truth. I feel like I can identify in this way, even if it's not even real. You know, and honestly, the other thing that I think about with this as well is the odd double standard with people's truths. 
So when you, even scripture talks about this, you know, like what the standard is that you use to judge yourself and to judge others will be used to judge yourself. And the problem is, is that if you have somebody who is identifying as non-binary, trans, whatever it is, they're, they're identifying with this particular gender or they're non-conforming. They're not saying, I have no gender. Okay, they're saying, I, I don't have a gender. I identify this way. This is my truth. This is how I truly feel in my heart that this is who I am. And according to Demi Lovato, that could change. <laughs> um, then by that standard, they don't have the right to judge somebody else that identifies as a hobbit. Or even going as far as, which is very controversial, ironically, in these groups, uh, identifying as a different ethnicity. And what, what's, what I find interesting is that, okay, well, by this standard, can't you just change your age then? You can, can you change species? And these used, these used to be fringe things, guys. Like, this used to be something that you would see on TV. Now it's almost becoming normal, that it's almost like, oh, wow, I can live out my fantasy. I, I can trade this reality for a fantasy. And everybody's going to be okay with it? <sighs> you know? And what bothers me about this is that there are people that don't like that. But they accept that there's no gender. This is why reality must be the basis in which we view the world. So this is kind of the, the mindset and, and the sense of reality that we have found our culture in. And gender is only a part of it. I'm using Demi Lovato here as an example because I don't see this as something to celebrate. I see this as something that's painful. I see somebody that needs help. And it's not just her. I think that there's an emptiness there that is only going to be temporarily filled. And this is why Jesus says, only he can give you rest. You're going to fill your life with the bread of the world. It's stale, moldy, but people still want it and they eat it up. It satisfies for a little bit and it makes you sick. But he says he's the bread of life. There's a satisfaction. And I'm not talking about like a material prosperity. I'm not talking about an easy life. I'm talking about as human beings, finding why we're here, the purpose for our existence, the great I am reaching out to us in a relational way to fulfill us in only the way that he can. This is is a sin issue. And people without a Christian worldview do not see it that way at all. Even some Christians uh, or people who claim to be Christian say that, oh no, this, this is something we need to accept. We need to adapt. We need to progress this in the church. The problem is, is that this, um, and this is the third part I want to bring up about this. This is causing more issues um, within this community then solving them. You're going to take away the gender constructs. You're taking away what makes men special. You're taking away what makes women special. The point is, is that I think for so long, people have tried to change and be unique in that change to fit in, to be happier. And this is just another thing that's sold, if you will, that's, that's become accepted for people to try to fulfill themselves. And this hurts. And in time, it's going to be really interesting to see the damage that this does, not just for the people that actually have struggles and need help, but for women, for men. You want to take down your, the, the gender constructs, that's not good. What makes me special as a woman? What have we been fighting for for the last few hundred years? Women's rights. You know what I mean? Like if we're trying to find what makes us unique and special, and we've made so much progress in that area, 
why in the world would you want to dismantle that work? It doesn't make sense to me. You want to take away everything that makes me special as a woman and tell me my gender is my choice? Even though my husband can walk by the door and within five seconds tell me exactly the exact math that I had wrong, you're going to tell me that, uh, that there's no difference between my six foot one, 200 pound husband and the way his brain works and the way that my brain works. I promise you that most of you listening right now, especially the women, you know what I'm talking about. You don't even have to have me explain these things. I celebrate these differences. Yes, there can be frustrations there. I know. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm pretty sure there's things about me that frustrate my husband, but and there's still probably work to do. But this is not the answer. She says, quote, it's difficult to remember sometimes. She's talking about her pronouns. As long as you keep trying to respect my truth, and as long as I remember my truth, the shift will come naturally. End quote. Let me give you an example of this, okay? Let me, let me try to make this a little bit more relatable, my point here. Um, I have two girls. Um, <clears throat> one's 11, the other seven. I'm not, let me just put, say this, I'm not a huge fan of Disney movies. We, are, we do not watch a lot of Disney movies. But a long time ago, I watched the movie Tinkerbell. And a few of you have watched this movie. And if you haven't, I'm just going to kind of give a summary of the movie. You have Tinkerbell, okay, who is born from a baby's laugh. And in the beginning of the movie, she has to discover what her true talent is. What was she made for? What was, what was it in her that she naturally had? Okay, what was her real talent? And there's all these different talents. You had um, the flower fairies. You had the water fairies. You had the light fairies. You had the wind fairies. You had all these different talents, okay? And then you had the tinker fairies, right? And she's supposed to go around and discover which one of these talents is, you know, unique to her. And she discovers, oh, I'm a tinker fairy. Okay. She discovers what tinker fairies do. And she's like, oh, I hate this. I don't like this. No, nope. I'm not a tinker fairy. I've decided I am no longer a tinker fairy. So what she does is she goes and she tries to find a new talent. She goes to the animal fairies. And she says, you know what? I'm going to learn to be an animal fairy today. This is my real talent. Tries out, you know, talking to birds and doing whatever they do. Disaster. Didn't work. She's like, all right, I must be a water fairy. So she goes to the water fairies, tries to do their thing. Disaster. Oh, I must be a, a flower fairy. Disaster. Oh, I must be a light fairy. Disaster, right? So she's going from one talent to the other denying who she actually is the whole time because she doesn't want to be what she was. Now, in the end, she ends up, of course, embracing the fact that, oh, I didn't like this thing about myself, but this is who, this is what I am. Now, I can see some people kind of turning this around saying, yes, but, um, I have denied my sexuality my whole life. I, I knew that I was non-binary or trans or whatever. And I am Tinkerbell because I finally accepted that truth. Yeah, but no. You're still dabbling with water fairies and animal fairies. Because what's actually true, you don't accept. That's the problem. People deny the truth. It's when they embrace the truth of who they are. That's progress. Okay? They think that they have embraced this truth, but in reality, here she is saying, you have to try to keep respecting my truth as long as I remember my truth. My truth does not equal the truth. Demi Lovato is a tinker fairy pretending to be a water fairy. And when that doesn't work, she'll move on to the next truth, air quotes, 
because when that doesn't work out, she'll go back. She said it before. I might, there might be a time I identify as trans. I, I don't know. Maybe I'll be gay. Maybe I'll be a lesbian. Maybe I'll be a woman. Who knows? Maybe, you know what? Maybe, maybe I should just accept the way that God made me because I am beautiful. I, I am gifted. I am talented. And it's when I actually look at myself and I stop, stop running from that, that healing can actually begin. You know, and, and speaking of children's stories and making this analogy and this connection, the emperor's new clothes comes to mind because everybody can see what's not true, right? They, they see that the emperor is naked. He has no clothes on, but you're not going to tell him that. Why? Because that's his truth, right? Everybody has to live in this lie to perpetuate the normalcy of, of the situation, even if it's true or not. And that's what I'm seeing with this whole situation. It's, it's a weird group think. We're not doing anybody any favors by letting them believe something that's not true. But because this is what's normal, this is what's popular, this is, this is what we have made people believe is their identity. It's not doing them any favors. So for those that are wondering, how is this hurting anybody? Let me ask you, do you think what happened to the emperor was right? Would you be somebody to call out the emperor? Probably not. You know, in the story, there's many different versions of the story, but you know who called him out? A child. Everybody else enabled him. But to the child in the eyes of a child, that was clear. Maybe a longer podcast than usual. And hopefully this all made sense to you. But it really all comes down to this element of truth. We have redefined this to the point that it's unmanageably unrecognizable. I have to wonder what the natural outcome of this is, because it cannot be good. You, you, you have this, you see this in scripture as well, just story after story. You have uh, hundreds of years in between Bible stories sometimes and it's the same story. People went their own way. They, you know, lived, they lived in a way that they thought was right. They lived basically their own truth. So I'm going to leave you with this. Live by truth, whether it's easy or popular. Number one. Number two, go give a man a high five. I mean, really, I think they've had a rough few years. <laughs> Thank them. As politically incorrect as that is, I love men. Thank you, men, for your work. Thank you when it goes unappreciated. Thank you for protecting us, changing my car tire when I need it, building shelves, building houses. Women, embrace your differences. Love and embrace the fact that if you like changing car tires, go do it. Embrace the fact that you have these unique capabilities that maybe a man needs help with. That's the point. Women, embrace the fact that you have a unique strength to you, that whenever the rubber meets the road, you will go all the way. That is unique. You are a nurturer. You are fierce. Our bodies are unique. Ladies, listen to me. You can keep a baby alive with your body. That is amazing. With just your body. Incredible. You know, and to let me just say this real quick. For, for the women that maybe struggled with, you know, nursing their babies, thank God for formula. Okay? It has saved lives. It has helped mamas. Don't you feel guilty? So yeah, guys, I, I know that this is nuanced. I know that there's a lot more to this, but these are just my thoughts on this. And I hope that um, it's been edifying for you. I hope it's been helpful. And uh, I hope it's made a few people kind of think about these things. Now, I'm still trying to think of a witty way to end my podcasts. I have not yet obtained that type of wit, <laughs> like a catchphrase or something like that. But I know it'll come to me. Until then, just know that I love you guys and I'm praying for you. 
And I really hope that uh, this podcast episode has edified you and helped you. God bless you all.